How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Angels Bob's Plus in Factorio, episode number 50. I can't believe we're all the way on number 50 already. If you guys are enjoying the series, make sure you guys leave a big thumbs up on this video. Make sure you guys go check out the rest of the series, though. And make sure you guys leave a comment and subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Other than that, let's get right into it. So, in the last episode, we... Started to kind of figure out bioprocessing a little bit more. Uh, still haven't quite gotten it going yet, as you can see. However, we have went ahead and got the silica. Silicon? Silica? Well, I guess it's silicon. We're getting the silicon ingots. Silicon ingots going. Uh, right now we're just waiting on... Oh, I, you know what? I connected the coal up on the wrong one. Oh no. Oh yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and get all this set up. That was Kool-Aid Man, in case anybody was wondering, you know, the... Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Or, oh no, oh no, oh yeah. And, you know, the Kool-Aid guy smashed through the wall, yeah. Anyway, so in the last episode, we uh, kind of talked about setting this up to get the better iron... And so that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, although this isn't perfect, like super great and perfectly ratioed, it's it's about as good as I'm willing to do without fully redesigning it. Alright, so we do need aluminum. I'm curious, why why do we have so little aluminum? Uh okay. What what actually gives us the aluminum? Not you. You give us the aluminum. Rubyite, because we have no red red shit. Awesome. Uh, Rubyite, where the hell do we get you from? Uh, we can get it from the Petrochem area. We might actually start setting up real, like, I mean, actual really real trains for once, instead of, you know, we say we're gonna do it, and then we don't, and then we, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be doing another one of those hap-dashed, not-a-train, train things. I mean, like, yeah, the... yeah, I know it's inefficient. Yeah, we should probably use the trains we set up, but eventually, guys, eventually, trust me. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're gonna have to go ahead and get Rubyite tapped, unfortunately. One of those unforeseen, I say unforeseen, but one of those consequences of neglecting parts of the factory. As all good Factorio put layers inevitably do. Unless you have a self-replicating self factory, which is quite, quite nice, actually. Then are you really playing Factorio at that point, or is Factorio playing you? Could, could have made a great reference there, but uh, we're, we're not going to. I'll, I'll leave that to the imagination of the commenters down below. I'm sure somebody will uh, draw that distinction for what I'm referencing without directly referencing it. When you have a self-replicating factory... Are you playing the game, or is the game playing you? I'm sure somebody will get it. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this all set up. Well, maybe not necessarily all of it, but a good chunk of it. Uh, did I ever actually make a real blueprint for this, or am I just doing this by hand still? I think I'm still doing this by hand. I am not a peasant. Where is an ore field? Here we go. We do not do such things that are beneath us. Uh, yeah, um, maybe, maybe we are. Hey, you know, let's just fuck it. Let's just design one that I can utilize over and over again. Where are my miners? Here, something like this. Uh, something like that. Something like that. Awesome. Cool. 
cool. Yeah, sure, we waste a little bit of belt on the end, but... We'll just go pick it up as we need it, I guess. We do save quite a bit of underground, I believe, doing this method. There is any green... As long as one of the drills is good, then the whole thing goes down. And we'll just clean it up as we need to clean up the edges and stuff. Awesome. Hey, we finished. We've really been going through the, a lot of the research. It's going to make it really nice. Some of them are weirdly, like, they don't give you anything. I don't actually do any of these. Yeah. See, uh, it's usually it's because of mod. Con I say mod conflicts, but it's less of a conflict and more of a one mod wants it to be hard by, like, having you do the preliminary research. But then others are just like, well, we're going to actually not do that. And so then weird recipe things happen. That, that is the unfortunate consequence of playing with, I don't want to say duplicate mods, but uh, redundant mods. That either do similar or the same purpose, which, you know, just leads to us having some recipes that get tweaked that didn't need to be tweaked and, and what have you. Right, so let's clean up the rest of that. that. Looks good. Looks good. And we don't need that one. Awesome. All right. So once, of course, all our ro robots are done doing their thing, then we'll be able to go ahead and connect this up with power. Uh, well, actually, well, we'll have to drag power over. Luckily, it's not too far away. Oh, uh, something isn't power. I was going to say, something's not powered. No, it's just this happens to not be powered due to uh, something else. We do have sulfur here, I just realized. We did... Did, did we ever do... Oh, no, we did. I was like... I vaguely remember doing this but then i was like oh you did yeah we did i, I should have known we have blue science i don't i don't know where we would have gotten it otherwise but whatever what's the uh majority of coke awesome as long as all of the coke is getting burnt uh we shouldn't have any reserve up here right good lord we have a reserve of coke we can't get rid of it fast enough. The Coconator is unstoppable. No, but in all honesty, though, like, yeah, I guess... Uh, I would have to do the math. I haven't done it in a while, um, as to see the fuel potential here. I, I want to say you want to stop at Coke. You don't want to convert it to, uh, to carbon, because I think the carbon's inefficient. I think you actually use more power to get it all the way to carbon than you do to, to get it to coke. Uh, I don't know, let's just take a quick carbon... Or, not quick carbon, uh, quick... Napkin math. Here, um... So, it looks like... Okay, so it does look like there is a max temperature we can... Oh no, that's the sulfuric wastewater. Right, so 2.5 megajoules for one piece of coke. Okay, so it is technically less fuel per thing, however, which does make it overall, with it, disregarding how much we actually get, it it does make it a less fuel dense item than coal, right? Because coal is four megajoules by itself. So simply put, a belt of coal is worth more fuel value than a belt of coke. Now, if we factor in converting the coal into the coke, again, we're going to disregard the production, like, power cost. Um, it takes... So it's a 1 to 2. Same fuel value overall. So, so far, no fuel value has been lost. Right? Well, I, I shouldn't say no fuel value has been lost, right? Because we did spend power crushing it. But for now, for argument's sake, we're going to disregard it. It's going to be like physics. We're going to disregard the air resistance. We live in a vacuum, apparently, according to most physics problems. Well, school physics, I should say. Not, like, real-world applications of the physics. Um, okay, so now if we go ahead and do the recipe we're doing, we take that two crushed coal that we made, right? So one, basically one coal into two coke. Oh, no, we do actually get a little bit of fuel value. Uh, we get one megajoule worth of fuel value. Now, do we save 
or, ra or rather, do we? Is it a net gain or is it a net loss? I think it's a net gain, so it requires a burner ore crusher and a liquefier. So uh, again, we're just gonna do some pencil and paper math here. So it looks like yeah, we'll for even sake, we'll just say 1.3 kilowatts, and then uh, 100 kilowatts. Okay, so about 2.5. So we get about seven. Well, okay, I I, I shouldn't say. 2.5 but uh 250 kilowatts um anyway. yeah i mean so we get what about 750 kilowatt net out of that uh, okay yeah so so it does make sense to go there now does it make sense to go all the way to carbon now um again for argument's sake we'll just say this one so it's a two to three okay so it's one coal into two coke so two coal into four coke right I don't know, we'll just say, so one coal into two coke. So it's one coal into three carbon. So it's a nine megajoule. Yeah, no, it, well, no, because we have to make steam. Although we could make steam either an electric boiler or otherwise. Um, okay, so right now we're at a net seven. I, you know, it actually might make sense to go all the way to carbon. Um, yeah, let's just do a little bit more. Uh, so 1.3, so... 380 and then if we did and yeah okay i could use helmod just for in case anybody's wondering but it's not as fun i like to I like to you know stay sharp on my my old school factorio having to have spreadsheets and and a whiteboard and doing math all right so uh, grumble grumble old person noise all right uh so yeah so the boiler consumes fuel i mean i don't really know how we would look at this but basically maybe okay what if we don't we have the electric boiler isn't that an option uh, electric yeah right here electric boiler all right so for our argument's sake 1.25 megawatts uh see factorio why can't you just have a standardized instead of fuel values being in mega joules which okay yes it makes sense joules are the potential or, or the energy potential mega watts are the active usage of the energy in case anybody's wondering the 1.25 megawatts um i forgot not necessarily i forgot but i'm not sure of the conversion between the two uh but it's it's not great i can tell you that right now so we're so we'd get nine and it already costs us and we're gonna subtract how much the base fuel value is from the one coal of uh four so we get a net five mega mega joule potential um i mean it's it's, it's not bad we, we do gain some fuel value there actually is that, that correct we get considerably more yeah because each one's five here and then we gain an additional four holy shit yeah we do look at that yeah see so because one of these is one piece of coal is four but we can turn it technically into nine megajoules yeah uh, yeah I, I would say we do we are going to gain some some fuel value by turning it all the way into carbon um yeah, I mean, we yeah, you know what? We might do that. Um, we might. Can we get any additional byproducts that we need? Maybe. Ooh, we can get some sodium carbonate. We'll, we'll just void the water, but we get some sodium carbonate? I don't know what that's going to be used for. I'm sure we'll find out, though. All right, so let's go ahead and get the power going. Pull, pull it over here now that we've kind of distracted ourselves. Spaghetti brain, boys. Spaghetti brain. And these are not going to be the best. Power pulls. Hey, oh damn it! I was going to be like, "Wow, look at that! We were so slick, we didn't hit anything, and then we hit everything." As it usually goes, and without hitting the rock. Awesome. Nice. Right, so we have. Let's see. Three, six, eight. I think I have an 8 to 1, or an, not an 8 to 1. God, that would be awful. I think it's an 8 to 4 balancer? We have a 16 to 4 balancer. 
We have a 16 to 8 balancer. We have an 8 to 8 balancer. Yeah, I think I've been using the 8 to 8 to balance just to a 4, because you can technically use it as such. It's not perfect, but... Awesome. And then... Let's go ahead and go this. We'll say from blue belt into yellow belt. From blue underground into yellow underground. Now, I'm not sure if this will work, because I know sometimes you get weird... Um... Because sometimes you do need the uh, longer underground to, to make it work, but I think for this it should work, yeah. Well, it converted it. I don't know if it's actually uh, everything's going to plug. Yeah, no, see, because these yellow aren't long enough to plug in. Some of them are. Um, what is that one plugging in? That one's fine. Yeah, but these four are not. Let me see if red are. One, two, three, four. Um, the red might be. We definitely need to get the steel gear wheel uh, system working. Oh, okay, yes. Red are long enough to do it. Awesome. Yes, we'll go ahead and get everything plugged in here, and then so... Um... Yeah, we'll just bring it all the way and do this. And we'll go, like, up this, 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 into there. And then for the output, we'll do every other one. So what some people might think is, oh, you just pull from the bottom port? No, no, no. You pull every other one. Um, you can either pull these four or you can pull the inverse that we didn't pull out and then of course let's make sure we upgrade these without disconnecting that and then it should be four full belts so then what we can do is we can go down in like so oh well actually not quite like that one um and then just do that and then we can even go further and do it into a uh, four to two uh, balancer if we really really wanted to I'm not going to because I don't think it's necessary uh, for really any reason uh, so now that we're all the way up here at the top let's go ahead without doing that let's go like that like that like that like that and like that oh damn one off so close and there we go and over and all the way down and all the way back up and all the way over awesome and all the way over and all the way down and all the way back up this top one probably won't last very long so there's only three miners on it so it's not got very much ore potential but hey awesome so that's now gonna flow so let's figure out how the hell on earth are we gonna route this over to the area now we could just do the seemingly obvious thing and route it on the two slightly pre-designated areas, which is probably exactly what we're going to do, actually. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to do that because that, that's the reason we have them pre-designated. That's basically what's going to look like that. Uh, something about to, let's see. Yeah, that should be about good. Yeah, we'll, we'll start a little bit more. Maybe do about there. Yeah, we'll run it past that. So let's go ahead and grab four for the belt brush. Yeah, so we'll set that there. The, well, uh, out of the vehicle, please. Something like that. Uh, not five lanes. Oh, hey. Uh, sync processing. That, 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 fluid handling, and stack inserters. Awesome. So much research. The world is being technologically advanced right now. By all of the research that is happening. Alright, so let's go ahead and drag a Rubyite all the way over. Anybody else notice how weirdly quiet this game gets? Sometimes with the way, uh, the music is for it. I feel like, uh, I feel like they could definitely look at getting a, uh, better, like, sound design slash, like, uh, just soundtrack overall for the team. Well, for the game, I guess, but I think for their team, expanding their sound department more, I think could be very beneficial. But that's just me. Um, okay, so now that we're here, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do something like this. Actually, you know what? I want that to be the middle. So let's do... Yeah, so we'll go to about there. Okay. 
So what I want to do is we're just going to do Fortitude again. Not not a perfect world, but you know it is what it is. So we'll, you know, output priority right, output priority left. Not input, output right. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, yeah, it's not a perfect design, but uh, there's only so much we can do at the end of the day. Proficiency. And this is one of my favorite things. It's when you have a ghost image, you hover over it at places, and the item is in your hand. I don't know if that's picker or vanilla. I think it's picker. Eh, actually, you know what? That might be vanilla. Oh my god, game, why are you chugging? No, don't do this to me. Do, do, oh, you know what it is? The nanobots are making a calculation to place the thing every, like, every tick. I'm actually going to turn them off just temporarily. And so when I'm doing this, they try to calculate how to place it. It could also just be the game, because I just noticed there did not like it, and they are turned off. Factorio, you're not supposed to be doing these things. It just doesn't like me, apparently, right now. Alright, let's look at the rest of this place, hopefully with a little, uh... Yeah, definitely the amount of belts we have does not help, but... As you've seen, we'll uh, only be adding more. The idea is to get as uh, full of belts as possible. May you know what? Maybe we'll start looking at robots. Because uh, I know robots will definitely help with that. I will do that. And then... And the reason I say robots will help with it is because... Jeez Louise. Then there's fewer calculations for all these open... Open tiles and whatnot. But yeah, even just an area like this. Okay, I zoom out, hit 60. This game just hates me. I'll zoom way in, not look at anything, not do anything. Although, just so everybody knows, zooming in does help a little bit, but it doesn't help greatly as the calculations still have to be done. I mean, graphically, sure, there there is, you know, less, but the sauce wasn't a graphically intense game. It's a it's a memory intense game, surprisingly. One of the few ones out there, I feel like. Where, unlike like Call of Duty or um, drawing a blank, Apex or what's another good one? Crisis, or Cyberpunk. It's not a graphically intensive game, nor is it a CPU intensive game. It's a very much, although having a better CPU and graphics card do help. Your RAM is surprisingly the biggest factor, along with, I guess, your motherboard and how good the lanes are on it. The sea of red comes. We will soon have all of the rubyite we need, and by extension, all of the aluminum we will ever need. See, now we're getting stable 60 FPS. Gotta love it. That's what happens when we play modded. This is partially why I didn't want to play a Death World um, with all of these mods, because as we have already seen, the base I am building is massive. Some people will turn this into a mega base because of how big it is. And, and I, honestly, it's not a bad idea, because Bob Angels and Bobs makes you pretty much have to build a base in significant size to where it almost just makes sense to you, you say, you know what? It's already going to be such a large base with such long distances as we've seen with Belt that it honestly just makes sense to say, okay, well, let's make all these little areas that we're building train stops, right? So you have your refining train area, your petrochem area, uh, obviously power, a refining section, uh, other refining section, and then like a main bus type of area. And honestly, I, I've seen designs for it. They all look amazing. I don't do that for like two reasons. Reason number one being is I I like doing a belt based base and I also like showing players how how one can do this crazy spaghetti of a factory with just belt um, and obviously some supplemental bots and then eventually full full bots as it helps significantly with performance. Um, but yeah. And I, I don't know, I feel like reason number two just being, 
as, as cool as it is to watch and look at mega bases, I'm not really a fan of building them. Um, partly because I feel like, although there is some uniqueness to a, a mega base, I honestly don't think there's much because at the end of the day, the community, especially for vanilla, like vanilla mega bases, pretty much, like, yes, they do look different. However, the overall, like, if you look at the individual builds, like the build of their power or the build of their smelter setups, they're all the same because the community has all figured out the most efficient design for everything months, years ago, even. Um, I don't know why I said months, but years ago, a lot of the builds have all been figured out. So it's, it's really just tweaking it at this point to see where you can squeeze a little bit of extra efficiency to how big can you build or how, how big are you willing to build? And then there are some people who are going as far as how big can you build before the game just says no more. And so it's, it's kind of why I, I don't really do mega bases. I, I've, you know, obviously this is inadvertently a very large base. I don't know if I'd call it a mega base by this mod series standards, right? For vanilla, yes, this is a very large base, like borderline mega base size. Obviously, some mega bases will go much, much, much bigger. Um, well, I don't want to say much bigger like this big, but they, they do get bigger than this. That is for sure. Um, but it is, it is still a massive base. If you walked from one side of it to the other, it will take you minutes. Driving helps significantly cut down time. Um, that is one thing I learned while playing the achievement hunting run on stream that we did a while ago. For this game is driving in a car significantly cut down the time it took to get from just really just the inactive time of running around and moving all right so we have all we have a bunch of assemblers i think we're pretty much good i don't think we need to pick anything up from down over here uh, did these all finish Yes, these are all finished. Awesome. So let's go ahead down there, I guess, and continue kind of experimenting with the few minutes we have left in this episode. And just kind of see more or less what the next process is going to be. Because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if we do. I'm also curious to see what this damn thing does. We'll, we'll figure out what they all do here in a minute, I guess. Uh, so let's empty out those. I want to make one of these swamp environment kits. I don't know what they do. Okay, so what do we do? I don't know what they do. I made one. It's in my inventory. It will live there, I guess. Oh, that's what you do. You make a swamp environment farm. Okay. Can I make another one of these? We need soil. I don't know what the difference between them is. I mean, okay, so this one says, the field is sown, grow seeds as well as gardens. This one uh, maintains wet climate conditions for specialized plants. Okay, so we made a swamp environment thing. Awesome. Is, is there a difference? There is, there is a crafting speed difference. Ooh, and they do reduce pollution. So these could in theory be a good, like walled thing, right? You could in theory have these around and then put your walls on one side and then put turrets here as well, and then just have these be like your environmental like farm uh, for pollution. And then if any pollution did leak out of your base, you had turrets to protect your your artificial pollution sucking wall, basically like a moat around your base to eat pollution. Okay, so then, yeah, so this one's just faster. So why wouldn't we do this one? Okay, and then we'll do that. Uh, the recipe doesn't change, right? I don't think it did. Okay, so then heavy mud water we can get. And then the mud, obviously, we can get. So let's go over there then, to, to the mud area. I wanna, I wanted to see what this does real fast, and so then we'll go ahead and end the end. We'll, we'll go ahead and end the end. We'll end the episode. All right. So it looks like this one, right? It said heavy mud water. Which one's that? This one. Okay. See you. Like so. Let's go and grow a stack of mud. Something like that. Something like 
Okay, not, not too slow. So then this gives us the seed we need, right? So then how do I get the bean for it? How do I make bean? I'm not sure. This has not been explained to me. Oh, you know what? I think we can do this. Hold up. Not that. Roll F. Beans. How do I get beans? Processing. In a bioprocessor. Bioprocessor. We're getting beans this episode, damn it. I'm not leaving you guys without having first gotten the bean. There we go, we have beans. Awesome. Beans. More beans. Cool beans. Alright. Well, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you guys have, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up down, down below. Make sure you guys leave a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys later. Peace out.